I can't take a heart that's broke making over again. But I know a man who can. I can't take a soul. I have this word I want to share with you, but please do remind you that Time of Refreshing comes on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday between the hours of 1 to 2 p.m. Jamaica time, of course, and on a Wednesday, we come to you live from the Divine Sanctuary from as early as 9 a.m. for our fasting service. You must know that the big one is coming up. On the 3rd of January 2024, not just first Wednesday fast, but heal the family, heal the nation. And that will be held right here at Headquarters Church. So please do not miss it. Come on out. You know where all the churches, the Jamaica Umbrella Group of Churches, I suspect, will be a part. And we look forward to seeing everyone from as early as 7 a.m., and we will have a wonderful time in the Lord as we stand in the gap for families, communities, and our nation. Please stay tuned for further updates as our bishop guides us accordingly. Another Worldwide Prayer Meeting is coming up this Friday at 7 p.m. And we will be in the Upper Room Sanctuary. And we hope to have a mighty move of the Holy Spirit for all those who can join and come on in. Come on in and please be a part as also this is the final one before the Christmas holiday. And we do have things to knock on heaven door about. Our Christmas morning service will be on Christmas morning starting at 8 a.m. Of course, you're going to have church Sunday morning and you're going to have church Monday morning. And just to keep you fully engaged... For those who are saying, what am I going to be doing on the 26th? The PFM Sports Department presents its annual domino competition on Boxing Day, Tuesday, December 26th, starting at 9 a.m. It's a French and a partner competition. Oh, those competitions can be very wild. Cost is French, $300 per person and $500 for each partner team. Well, you know... You make the best of it and certainly have fun. So the church has set out a bundle of activities for you to be a part of. Our watch night service will be on December 31st. Yes, Sunday morning and Sunday night you'll be at church. And I know you're not going to miss any one of them. The 31st Sunday morning, Divine Sanctuary and the 31st Sunday night for our watch night service. Please come on out. Watch night service will start as early as 8 p.m. So that's four plus hours in the Divine Sanctuary together. And I remind you again about January 3rd. I open with that one and I close with that one. That we are going to have our Heal the Family, Heal the Nation right here at Headquarter Church. Not the National Arena. Please tell your friends. It will not be at the National Arena come January 2024. We are going to be in-house right here in Portmore at the Headquarter Church at the Power Faith Ministries International in the Miracle Cathedral starting from 7 a.m. This is the 18th annual gathering and is a partnership with the Jamaica Umbrella Group of Churches. So we look forward to you being a part of all that which have been mentioned with the Worldwide Prayer Meeting, which is tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Also, we're looking forward to see you Christmas morning at 8 a.m. That's on the 25th of December. The PFM Sports Department will have its annual domino competition. Come on out and be a part. $300 for each person or $500 for a partner. It's a French competition style. Watch night service, the 31st of December. I know you're not going to make that miss you. Please bring on out the family and your friends. Share this link even now with someone. And share all the announcements with someone so that they can come on out with you. Better yet, bring the whole family with you. We come to you live all the time because God has blessed and raised up a mighty man of God who you just heard from and his wife. 
So Bishop Dr. Delford Davis and his wife, Minister Dr. Petrova Davis, founder and co-founder of the Power of Faith Ministries International. We thank you for joining them and helping them in all the ways you have been helping them and supporting them with prayer and with your finances. We thank the members of Power of Faith and all the visitors alike, all the pastors and bishops who are working out in the field locally and internationally. We bless God for them, for their continuous support of our bishop. We thank God for the AV department who have come under tremendous amount of pressure over the last couple of days, maybe even weeks. Because you can see the modernization if you were at Melodies of Praise last Sunday, of how impressive it was and how they worked tirelessly to bring you a seamless and almost flawless service and all the different things that happened for you to have enjoyed that service, those who came live and those who viewed it together. Of course, we are still improving. The equipments are very advanced and state of the art, so there's so much more that can be done. But with your help and your continued support, we will get better and better as we serve you in this medium, this form, and many other forms which will come to you live through the AV department. We thank God for the administrative arm of the Power of Faith Ministry. They have continued to support the bishop and the board of directors here so that they can execute not only the spiritual things, but the things that must take place administratively for the church to run smooth. Similarly, in the other churches, we thank God for all of them. And all our friends and partners, God bless you. And I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Christmas. And Happy New Year when it comes. That's from me because I may not be in the seat again until 2024 in the will of the Lord. So from my house to your house, from this church family to your church family, from our bishop and founder and first lady, Dr. Petrova Davis, we say to you, Merry, Merry Christmas. I have this word that I want to share with you today, but let us pray quickly and then we get into it. Father, I thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your gifts and opportunity. I pray, Lord, that you will use me and speak to me now to your people so that they will be encouraged and strengthened and even be provided with a reminder that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And of course, I'm Minister Michael Norman Maranch. Come to you from Psalms 14 today. And I'm going to read all seven verses. And I hope you find this, this one today quite interesting. I see Delia Williams already online. And Susan, good afternoon, Bishop and PFM members. Merry Christmas to you, to Petal. Pleasant good afternoon to you, Carleen, and all the, the others. Psalms 14, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. They have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good, no, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread, and do not call on the Lord? There they are in great fear. For God is with the generation of the righteous. You shame the counsel of the poor, but the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion when the Lord brings back the captivity of his people. Let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. The theme today will come from verses number one, but it echoes all the way to the end of this chapter. It takes a fool. Verse 1 said, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I, I thought about it and uh, I was enjoying myself in preparation for today. That it really takes a fool. Yeah, that's the theme. It takes a fool. To say that there is no God. You know, oftentimes I will give a definition. And this today is very appropriate for me to just say in a very simple way. 
A fool is a person who acts unwisely or imprudently. And uh, you can start to stretch your imagination today about how many persons you have bucked up on that you have called a fool. And sometimes, even jokingly, you say behaving like a fool. Sometimes you might be upset and you call somebody a fool. But what I am saying now is that when it comes on to God, when it comes to his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus, when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ, when it comes to the great commission that has been given to the church, and you hear somebody say, oh, Christians, oversight, there is no God. There, there, there is no Jesus. There, there is no Son of God. And you hear all of these kind of things. Just, just rest assured. Don't pick an argument. Don't even pick a fight. Those of us who are very passionate about the gospel, about passionate about our Lord and Savior, I would love to think that I fall in that group. Very passionate. Let us, let us learn to be humble because it takes a fool to say that there is no God. It takes a very big fool, I would say, if, if there were classes of fool, a super fool to say that there is no God. To, to, to make this so clear that I, I, I wouldn't even bother call the name of the university, but I was asked to open a university church service. I brought the, the church service it was the first major event for the year. And I said profoundly in that university setting to make, it, to make this, this, this testimony go quick. I said in Proverbs 1 and verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. You might have been to say, you must have been very bold. Try to be bold everywhere concerning my Lord and Savior. Because it's not just the man in the street that you might see who you could consider to be uneducated and you say, no, I'm not going to do it, God. But you'll be surprised that not just in Jamaica, but in the Caribbean and maybe worldwide, they, if you were to do a statistics, you might be surprised to know that it might be that the greater percentage of the so-called wise people of this world uh, that are living would say that there is no God. Because they believe that they are so bright and they are, they are so intelligent that they, they, they have not lent themselves to believe that there is a superior being that gave them the very knowledge that they are using to question God. In Psalms 19 and verse 1, we hear what the word of God has said. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his underwear. When you wake up in the morning, and, and I'm not even going to try and challenge and argue with them. Or go down this road that I might just stop and look down it. You want to tell me that all of this was just a great boom, a great bang? You want to tell me that the people who sit in certain offices truly believe the evolutionary theory? Truly believe that there is no creator? Truly believe in this time and age with all of what is happening in this time and age? Truly we sit down in their house, eat the food, drink the nice beverage, whatever the beverage is that of choice, and sit down in a comfortable home, wherever home is, and whatever comfort is to you, my brother and sister, driving or being driven, or even if you have Wi-Fi access and watch this on the plane and say, what is this little man talking about? in Portmore, in St. Catherine, in Jamaica, at the Power of Faith Ministries International, telling me, who don't believe in God, yes, it could be you, that you are a fool. And I sit right here and tell you that you're a fool. Because you say you don't believe in God. And you need to see God. But right now, you in that plane, in that first class seat, or wherever you are, you are in a plane and you can't even see the pilot. 
And yet you believe that that plane is safe in the air because a well-trained pilot and the engine is working good. And you put your trust in all these things that, are, that can mechanically fail. But we tell you about a God who has never failed, never, ever failed, never failed yet. Whose word, oh, I, 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 let me, I'm getting passionate again, already I should say. Whose word is his bond, who honor his word above his name, and his name is so high. And if he puts his word above his name, mercy, and you still sit down and say there is no God. The psalmist in Psalms 8 from verse 3 and 4 tried to give us a little understanding about how we should look at this. He said, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained. Now, have you ever sat down? Can you imagine if one day the sun was just missing? Or oh, all of these people would try to come up with an explanation. And if the moon was just missing, what would we do? Especially those of us with solar panel all over the place. Eh? What would we do if the sun goes missing? We can't even manage to do every rain. And, and what we do is the sun, the spear rain and, and claw. We can't manage. Can you imagine the sun and the moon has always turned up? Always turn up and turn up on time. We have to change time to match the sun and the moon. The sun and the moon don't change time to match us. Because when we say, well, it's daylight saving time. What would usually be 6 o'clock now become 5 o'clock because we still want to maximize the daylight. The sun don't change to match us. We have to change to match the sun. I just use it as an example. There are a myriad of examples. But yet still, the fool saying to himself, the sun is right there, so. And come up with all kind of explanation. The Lord has hung it in place. As oh, he has placed the world in place. As oh, he has prescribed where the water should come. The sea. Where he has prescribed it and said, go no further. And hear all kind of thing about climate change. And all kind of, but the Lord has prescribed where the water must stop. I could go a little further. There is two oceans that have met together. Two oceans. And you look at it, one side look green, look one side look blue. Until today, the scientists, them that trying to go all over the space and build all kind of racket, cannot explain until today. These things are all over, you can Google. I don't want that to take up my message, but I have to say it to you. The two water until today don't mix. The two oceans go together. So who could have commanded two body of water? Not to mix. And then meet and stop right at the one another. You try to drop a little sorrel inside of your water and say, don't mix. I look a syrup. <laughs> you see what happened? Eh? I just start to enjoy. I must do a little enjoyment like Bishop. Hmm? But yet still, with all the myriad of things that the, the man can look at with his physical eyes, he still walk around and say, there is no God. No God, man walk around and say, and woman too. No God. With all the, the things that exist right in the presence to say, look at this. You think all of these things are accident? Accident? No, my brother, sister. It's about time you start to come to terms with it. But it takes a fool to say, with all of the evidence that is around us, that there is no God. It takes a fool. I thought about it and I said, since man loves evidence so much, so since we like evidence-based everything, and God has provided us with concrete evidence, concrete evidence that he is God, and man still fail to accept that God exists and that God is God and there is just one God. Hmm? 
They try to all kind of things to go around all kind of corner. But I am seated here today to say to you, according to Psalms 14, before I go any further, the fool say first in his heart, there is no God. He said, those who say those things, they are corrupt and they have done abominable works. There is none who does good. You know why? Because they know the moment they accept to themselves that there is God. They know judgment is upon them. You know? Not that judgment will not be upon them if they don't accept. But the moment they accept that there is God. Right now, some of them, they only can sleep by denying that God exists. They, they, they behave certain way. Because they know that there is one that sits above them that is going to judge them on that great day. Some are even facing God's wrath right now. And they are denying it. But don't you be like them, my brothers and sisters. Don't you be like them. They will not last forever. It's only a matter of time. But let them continue. But you, who the fear of the Lord, is upon you don't be like them. No, 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 no. You don't, don't, don't be like them. Because according to the psalmist, in the same Psalms 14, second verse, the Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand who seek God. You see, those of us who seek God, the more we seek him is the more he reveals himself to us. But the fool said, no, we're not a time for, no, for, no, for your God business. For the, for the God we want to serve, this, this, this mysterious God. The God that we serve reveal himself to us because that's what he tells us. That's what he has made clear to us. That he will reveal because no one knows the spirit of a man except that man. Same way, no one knows the spirit of God except him. But God revealed these things to us by his spirit. <laughs> I enjoying myself right there on that one. So we have to try and make sure that we pay attention to those persons who would lead us astray. Those persons who will deny the very existence of the creator. Those who believe that they are so intelligent that they don't want nobody to sit down and tell them about the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of Moses that divided the Red Sea. Right now they're trying to come up with all kind of, or should I, theory about how the Red Sea was parted. I was watching one the other day, and I laugh, I laugh, I laugh. They're trying to, they're trying to do all kind of things to discredit the word of God. And the more them try to discredit the word of God. Is the more the word is being fulfilled right in their presence. And what does a fool do? Hide his or her face from the truth. Let me tell you this. When you buck upon a fool. Be very careful how you talk to that fool. And yes, I'm using the word. A fool to the gospel. One who wants to remain a fool. One who will become very violent at you. If you try to correct them. You know, let me just use the scripture. Let us go to Proverbs 9. I'm going to read five verses starting from verse 8. Norma Blake said, glory, hallelujah. All three, Natty. Listen, we're having some problem with some people. I'm looking at some of the, the comments. We're having some problem with the people, Camille Campbell. And the problem that we are having with them is that they are fools. Are you arguing with the fool? Are you quarreling with the fool? No, you no, you'll make yourself look also like a fool if you go and quarrel with a fool. It takes a fool to quarrel with a fool. You recognize somebody who wake up in the morning, who have confidence that when what let me give you one more example. When water is not in the pipe, them so oh. National Water Commission, and they blame National Water Commission, and all kind of things. No, you go down to, the, to one of the fall then. The fall is there every day. And the fool said to himself, no, water always come outside here. From where and how? 
what cause it, what design it. That fresh water will come from there. It must have a source. Where is it coming from? The fool? Well, somewhere out of the rock. That's the kind of answer. They, they come on fool and they bride fool. We go down to some university explanation and geology and mineology and all kind of ology. Rather than simply accepting that the earth is the Lord. Proverbs 9 and from verse 8. Do not correct a scoffer, lest he hate you. You hear, you hear what I'm saying? Don't correct a fool. If you correct a fool, the fool will hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. You hear that? You correct a fool, the fool will hate you. You correct a wise man, you rebuke a wise man, the wise man will love you. Give instruction to a wise man and he will still be wiser. Because if you are able to give a wise person instruction to add to the knowledge that they already have, they sit down and become your student. Oh, you're not hearing me. The wise person recognizing that you have something to contribute to them will immediately become your student wanting, eager to learn that which he or she never knew before. Oh, but it's not so with some people. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. Because bright people like to meet up with those who can help them. But not every bright people accept God. So I'm talking about the bright man who accept God. Even the dunce man that accept God is brighter than some bright people according to university. Because the dunce man, as all we classify dunce man who accept God, Lord help me with saying this one, is brighter than the man with two PhD because he has not yet learned the fear of the Lord. And Psalms 1 7 says, if you are 10 PhD and you have no fear for God, you are a dunce. My words that. But the word of God says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning. So it means that it doesn't matter what you have. If you don't have the fear of the Lord, you, you, you don't have no wisdom yet. Because it's when you have the fear of God, that's the beginning. That's the starting point. That's where you begin to be a wise person in the sight of God. Don't take my words for it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Psalms 1 7. I just went right back to it. So ask yourself today Am I a fool in the eyes of God or am I wise in the eyes of God? That's my simple message today. And if you are from the former, who don't have the fear of God, then, my brother, I say to you according to the scripture, you are a fool. It takes a fool to say there is no God. I continue with this teaching. From verse 10, Proverbs 9, that's where I land back. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So we have this in Proverbs 1 and 7 and Proverbs 9 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. When you start to recognize why you are here, brothers and sisters, I, I, I'll say this with the greatest of humility. You know, growing up, this was not even on my mind. It's because I'm reflecting. I am reflecting as I am sharing with you. I most of you know my past. I have failed everything and started to, to, to put my mind to the books, as we would say. And something happened or something was being worked on. And I started to study three things. Almost simultaneously. One and then I start another, then I start another. I was studying CIA, Certified Internal Auditor. My wife is at home. She's laughing when I say this. 
I was, I was studying um, my master at the University of Manchester, was doing it for finance also, and CFA, Chartered Financial Analyst. And some person looked at me and say, from the master's group, I was helping him with something that, when they saw some of my books, they say, what are you doing? I say, oh, I am doing CIA and CFA. And they asked me, so what time you do the master's? I say, I do the master's in my spare time. You see, after a while, God kind of turned the dunce brain in a, into a brain that can learn some things. And along the way, I, I, I realized that, and I just, like, I put up bricks. Because you know what? And this breaks is very much consistent with the time when I gave my life to the Lord. I was paying so much attention to book. Of course, I knew about the Lord. I was paying so much attention to trying to get the things that you and I are working on daily. Everyone wants a better house. Those who don't want to have a car might want a car. Who have a car might want a better car. Going to university. All these things. But I was not focusing on God. And I said, but look at this. I am studying three things. Things one time. And I'm teaching every day the same way and have a full-time job. And I study right through. And as I said to people, I never normally go to sleep. I, I fall asleep. I don't sleep. I fall asleep. I sleep anyway. I fall asleep. Doing CIA, the MBA, and CFA simultaneously. I get a little relief. The CIA, I did the challenge. I did all levels one time. Boom. The master's was progressing. So I get a little bit more time because I finished one of them. And then I was sat and I look into myself and say, I'm doing something wrong. Because I was not pursuing God. I was not seeking God. I wasn't even a Christian. But thanks be to God that something was planted inside of me. I'll preach about that sometime in the future if the Lord permits and give me the opportunity. To, to, to get this out and I just felt that. And I am telling you, I have not turned back since. Because we could be running down the world and get all of these things, all kind of accolades and, and title that we, 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 we earn for so much. I yearn for them. But at the end of the day, if you do not have the fear of God inside of you and you refuse to have that fear, I say to you, you are a fool. In the 11th verse, it says, For by me your days will be multiplied. And the years of life will be added to you. So we, you, you just get up and go through life so every day and believe that it is an alarm clock that wake you up. And the bread that you have, you're going to just live this life. And when you die, you just die and then bury you just dead. So. And you don't say to yourself, no, 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 no. There must be more to my life, to everybody's life, than just... Being born and go to school and being how oh, you were raised and how oh, you live and, and, and you die and they bury you. There must be something else for your life. There must be something else that is going to happen to you. For if you are wise, you are wiser for yourself. And if you scoff, you will bear it alone. That's why we say every man has to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. Everybody have to work it out. As much as as parents, when we pray for our children, they, we carry them to church. But they great come a time when they become big man and big woman. They have, to, they have to choose God for themselves. They have to want to know God for themselves. They have to decide that there is a God. You might pray for the people at your office. Yes. And they may not want God. And you look at them and say, look how God is blessing them. And they refuse him. I say, it takes a fool. I pause because I, I want to know if I should say this one. I will not call the name. A certain person who does not accept our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Very ill. Fall ill. Heart attack. We, we normally say, at death's door. And a car was placed to me like I suspect many other. And they say, I know you know this person. 
please go into prayer and fast and ask God to heal them. And I said, send one message to them. One message. I'm asking you to send. If the person can get a message on their sickbed. It is the God of Abraham. And Isaac and Jacob. I am going to go and pray to. For that person healing. I said, relate this message. And we go down into prayer. Because that one. That one I wanted God to demonstrate to that one. Like many others, but that one was like a mission field for me. And we laid on prayer. Not only has the person recovered, they have recovered and, and, and have attained to a higher office in Jamaica, I can't call it in. Higher office. I'm not saying I'm the only one who prayed. I'm just saying, as I send this message to that one and say, it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And based on the looks of things, that person still today don't have nothing to do with God because they're too bright and have too much money. Yes, one of Jamaica, wealthy, wealthy person I'm talking about. Through my jobs and so forth, I get to meet this person. I could shake their hand and maybe rub shoulder if the Lord permits in certain function. Yes. And they say, we know you are a minister at Power of Faith. We know and we are asking you to come here and speak to us, but you also preach to us. It's very ill. And I said, all right, we send the prayer. Make sure you tell them, God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the most I got, and I'm going to his son, Jesus, my Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit will stand in the gap and send healing for him and fully recover, fully recover. And I have nothing to do with our God because those persons behave like fools. I don't, I don't want to offend them. But you behave like a fool when you do that. And they say, if you are wise, you are wise for yourself and you scoff, you will bear it alone. I want to go to something to tell you a famous portion of scripture. And then I come back before we close. I don't know if there's any call, anyone wants to call. We are, we are 15 minutes before end and I'll take a call or two if it comes. But in the book of Joshua, chapter 24, oh yes, I'm going there. Joshua gathered all of Israel, and I will not read all leading up to verses 14 to 15. No, I, 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 I'll just read from maybe about, where should I start? I'll start at 6. And Joshua realized that Israel, oh yes, the chosen people of God were behaving like fools. And hear what Joshua do. From verse 6. Then I, Joshua is reminding all of them. Joshua said, the Lord said to Joshua, Then I brought your fathers out of Egypt. And you came to the sea. And the Egyptians pursued your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. So they carried, they cried out to the Lord, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. Brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes saw what I did in Egypt. Then you dwelt in the wilderness a long time. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, who dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. And they fought with you. But I gave them into your hand that you might possess their land and I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, the king of Moab, arose to make war against Israel and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not listen to Balaam. Therefore, he continued to bless you. So I delivered you out of his hand. Then you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho. And the men of Jericho fought against you. Also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Gergesites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. But I delivered them into your hand. Now, if I was to draw comparison here, I, I, I couldn't finish. Many of you see how God has delivered plenty of people and they are not Christian. And even out of their mouth, they say, Boy, thank you, God. Which God are you thanking, sir? 
Can you come out of your mouth, thank you God. You know there is a God. But you say in your heart, there is still no God. I set the hornet before you. And drove them out from before you. Also the two kings of the Amorites. But not with your sword or with your bow. I have given you a land for which you did not labor. And cities which you did not build. And you dwell in them, you eat of the vineyards and the olive groves which you did not plant. And bring you now to wear most of your coat. You have to understand. Oh, I see it. Israel was behaving like fools. The way how they were living. Of course, they know that they knew that there was God. But they act like there was no God. As a matter of fact. When Moses, you, you, you know what they, Aaron did with the gold earrings and gold chain, and you know what they did in the wilderness, and you know how the wrath of God came upon them, and you know Moses stood in the camp gate according to Genesis 36, and you know what Moses said, who is on the Lord's side, come on this side, and you know who came, and they pulled sword, I don't want to go into that. After all of this, Joshua said, look how they're behaving. Now these are people who should know better. And they're not doing better. So can you imagine the other people who are denying God? But everybody in a one group who don't have the fear of God. Don't have no wisdom when you don't have that fear. And if you had it and you lose it, then you lose wisdom. Because the word of God said, Proverbs 1 and 7, the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning. You don't have that fear, you don't even start learning nothing yet. Then Joshua said, you know that we bring all of it together and reminding them, Joshua said, Know therefore, hear the word, fear the Lord. What a word. Fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. And Joshua said, Serve the Lord. And then verse 15 that all of us like to quote. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. And what did Joshua say? Everybody can complete this verse. But as for me, be wise, me have sense. Me see where God has carried me from. I see how far we have come. I see the difficult days. I see the successes. I see the fights. I see the victory. I see the war. I don't just look on the wars that I am facing today. I see the many battles. I see the many times the enemy has come. And the Lord has lifted up a standard against the enemy. Joshua said, I see it. But you're behaving like you don't remember. Like you don't know. Like it's not etched in our hearts and our mind what God has done. Joshua said, but as for me and my house, we will what? Serve the Lord. And of course, I could not finish today without telling you what Isaiah have to say. In chapter 40 and from verse 21, Isaiah just put the icing on the cake for me. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He brings princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth mean useless. And then Isaiah said, scarcely they have been planted. Scarcely they have been sown. Scarcely shall their stock take root in the earth when he also blow on them and they will wither and the whirlwind will take them away like stubble. Then Isaiah asked the question, to whom then will you liken me? Or to whom shall I be equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things. Who brings out their host by number. He calls them all by name. 
by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power, not one is hidden, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, that my way is hidden from the Lord and my just claim is passed over by my God? And let us second the question Isaiah said, Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faint nor is weary, is understanding, is unsearchable. You will never be able to figure out God like you figure out your iPad and you figure out your laptop and you figure out your Wi-Fi connection and you figure out the water and the amount of salt content. You, know. you will never be able to figure out God. And if you are waiting first to, under, to understand and to figure out God before you accept God, you will never accept him if that's what you're waiting on. Because the word of God says is understanding is unsearchable. And when I read this the first time from the New American Standard Version, New American Standard Bible, it says his understanding is unscuttable. I have to go and look it up. His understanding is unscuttable. And when I look it up in the dictionary, it says you can't figure it out. The King James Version say unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases in power. Even though the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young man shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. If you don't accept God, today. A son who we must come through. Can no man come to the Father except by me, says our Lord and Savior. If you fail with, with a multitude of evidence that surround you in this information technology age where information is running after you, you just say Jesus in your house and Google and all of them according to us. The devices are listening and see how many things about Jesus come up on your iPod. Just say God, the creator of, a of the world. Just say Abraham and Isaac. How much things start to come to you. Even the equipments are responding to the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Responding to the name of Jesus. The very equipments that are responding when you say to God alone. All kind of Christian start songs start to come to your device. Are responding and the heavens declare Psalms 19 said it's glory and it's firmament and you are still sitting there saying that there is no God what will it take you what would it cost you for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I've said it very clearly to you what would you give in exchange when that great day come you gain the whole world and you have not yet secured your soul for eternity. You have not secured your life. What you're saying? Boy, I'm waiting you know. I am waiting. As almost as if you know your end date. My brothers and sisters, I encourage you in this time, as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who some persons criticize us. Now, we have always said that we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And they're all, all kind of suspicion. Well, I can't believe it that now. But the fool said there is, he was not born. That's what the fool said. Isaiah make it very clear in verse 9. That unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. I, you know the scripture. In Isaiah 7, the Lord also said, I am going to, I'm going to give you a sign. And a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Right there. But the fool said there is, there is, there is no God. No God at all. But you know, I say to you today, please be encouraged. You're not doing anything wrong. For those who are wondering if we're serving the one and only true God, you're not doing anything wrong. Continue on the path that you are. Continue to serve him in sincerity and in truth. Continue to spread the news of the gospel, of the good news of Jesus Christ. Because there are still people out there that want to hear it. There's still people looking for somebody to bring this message to them. Don't worry about the fools that reject him. The Lord did say that they will reject us. They're going to be scoffers in the last days. But you continue to be a truthful 
sincere, loyal child of the most high God. Continue. And when you buck upon a fool, don't be discouraged. Fools will always be fools. You tell a wise man, Philip, book a wise man who nothing about God. Ah, uh, time, I'm out of time. And Philip said to him, You know what you're reading? He said, No, I'm not gonna know unless somebody tells me. The Ethiopian eunuch will come. And Philip they, 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 they go up in the chariot and start to share with him. And when the un when the wise man heard the word of God, the living word of God flowing through the apostle, he said, The wise, see water there enough. See water there. What hindered me from being baptized? And they commanded the chariot. Never understood. But a wise man hears something, is going to accept the correction and the instruction. But a fool hates correction, hates that there is a God. It was my pleasure to serve you today. And I just want to tell you thanks for sticking around with me during this time of refreshing. Please do remember that another worldwide prayer meeting comes up this Friday, which is tomorrow at 7 p.m. in the Upper Room Sanctuary. We are going to have Christmas morning service also on December 25th, Monday, starting at 8 a.m. in the Divine Sanctuary. And also on Boxing Day, December 26th, we're going to have an annual domino competition right here at the Power of Faith Ministries International starting from 9, is it 9? Oh, that's, yes, at 9 a.m. It's a French competition, $300 per person and $500 if you're in partnership. Also, please do remember that watch night service comes up on December 31st, which is a Sunday. So you have Sunday morning and Sunday night. And January 3rd, our annual first of the first Wednesdays in the form of Ely Family, Ely Nation will be right here at the Power Faith Ministries International Headquarters Church. Lead, being led by our Bishop Dr. Delford Davis and his wife, Minister Dr. Pajova Davis, and in collaboration with the Jamaica Umbrella Group of Churches. Many bishops and pastors will be here with our pastor to ensure that we take the country, and by extension the Caribbean and the world, to the Lord in prayer, because except the Lord be in the house, we work in vain. So we thank you for joining our bishop week after week, year after year, to support him and his wife and all the bishops and pastors that work alongside with him and the team right here at the headquarters so that this great commission that is being carried out through this mighty man of God can continue. So we thank you for your support. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your financial support also and your well wishes for the Power of Faith Ministries. We thank God for you and your church and your church family and your pastor and bishop and reverend. We bless God for you always. I want to pray, Heavenly Father, that those persons who are struggling and they are wondering about what should they do concerning their love for you, that the spirit of doubt be removed from them. Lord, I want to pray today that for a special healing to come upon many families who are, who are suffering and many, many loved ones who are in the hospital or could be at home now recovering from all kind of operation or all kind of ailment. That you reach down your mighty hand and touch them. Lord, there are some family members who have been incarcerated or in prison. Lord, whatever it is, let the right evidence come forward because some are incarcerated incorrectly and some are placed there because of wicked people. Lord, bring forth the correct evidence. Bring forth that would have been suppressed so that justice can be served in this time. And the perpetrators of evil, expose them, Almighty God, and let the full arm of the Lord come to them. Lord, I pray that all those who are all over Jamaica and the world, who are troubling your people to live peacefully, that you will come against those workers of iniquity as you promise that you will. Father, deliver your people. Bless them abundantly so that the enemies will be even more upset. Set the table in the presence of their enemy. And let your people live in peace, love, and happiness. Lord, we tell you thanks for all the good things you have done. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Now, it was my pleasure to serve you today, and I am Minister Michael Norman Mirage. And remember, those who deny our Lord and Savior, it takes a fool to deny God. I can't take a heart that's broken, 
making over again. But I know a man who can. I can't take a soul that sins.